Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today is Tuesday, June 24th, 2014, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, he was a spy who risked everything to bring down top terrorists, only to become a target himself. Another CIA informant gets double-crossed. Meanwhile, the Federal Bureau of Entrapment is now targeting preppers. Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs reports. And Intel is developing a kill switch for laptops that would enable the remote monitoring and disabling of your computer. A disturbing prospect given the firm's link with the NSA. All that and more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Technology is getting more fascinating each day. It's also getting a lot more creepy, especially when it comes to the big companies like Intel. Well, now they've developed a kill switch for their laptops. And here's the article by Paul Joseph Watson, Intel developing kill switch for laptops. It is widely acknowledged by experts that the NSA has hardware level backdoors built into Intel and AMD processors. Earlier this year, during a Reddit online chat session, Intel CEO Brian Kranich refused to answer a question on whether the NSA had backdoor access. What they develop is what they call a wireless credential exchange, wherein they create sort of a kind of a free speech zone. And if the phone leaves out of that area, well, suddenly it becomes disabled and refuses to work. And uh, this goes back to the whole kill switch thing that happened with the iPhones back in 2008. Uh, here's an article out of the Telegraph. Apple Jobs confirms iPhone kill switch. Steve Jobs, Apple's chief executive, has confirmed there is a kill switch built into the iPhone that allows Apple to remotely delete malicious or inappropriate applications stored on the device. Fast forward now to 2014 in June with the Guardian article, Apple iPhone kill switch cuts thefts and Microsoft and Google are to follow. Apple's introduction of the kill switch in its iPhone software last September has cut thefts of phones across the board according to data from London, New York, and San Francisco, while those of other smartphones have continued to rise. And if you look at the statistics, in London they fell by 24% in the first five months of 2014. And in San Francisco, they fell by 38%, and in New York, by 19%. So the whole uh, theory behind the kill switch thing is that it's going to cut down on thefts. And so we need to have these in place, even though back in, what, it was 2012, Apple developed a patent, which they filed to wirelessly, uh, remotely disable cameras on iPhones and have them enter into sleep mode when they enter into sensitive areas, which is in... Uh, a Paul Joseph Watson article, all new Android and Windows phones will have a kill switch. So they're following Apple in this trend. Although the kill switch would ostensibly be included to discourage theft, a scenario where authorities could hijack the technology to shut down communications in a sensitive area in order to limit photo or streaming video coverage, such as a demonstration um, or at the scene unfolding of police brutality, is easily to envisage. And you've seen Police go and do that just on their own, grab people's iPhones, erase footage. We've had our own reporters have footage erased off of their phones when they've gone into sensitive areas, mainly just asking questions. But that is what this technology is going to be used for, especially on reporters. They'll kill iPhones. They'll kill these video streaming devices. And taking the story a little further, we have an article that appeared in September of last year. Secret 3G Intel chip gives Snoop's backdoor PC access. The Intel Core uh, V Pro processor contains a secret 3G chip that allows remote disabling and backdoor access to any computer, even when it's turned off. And they even mention that in their video proudly. Unlike software-only solutions that require PCs to be powered on and software agents running on a fully functional OS, a hardware-assisted approach enables PCs to be managed regardless of system state and without requiring software agents. The result? IT or IT service providers can diagnose and fix problems without a desk-side visit, schedule PCs to power down at night to cut energy costs and still have the ability to power them up for off-hours patching. So while the idea for this 3G chip was probably thought up by some, you know, pot-bellied engineer in the back trying to make his job and life a lot easier, the NSA and other companies that have their roots stuck deep into these companies are going to use this same technology to access computers to either steal data or upload certain data that they want to have on your computer before they come and arrest you. And let's go back to the Paul Joseph Watson article, Intel Developing Kill Switch for Laptops. 
He writes, the idea of companies having access to a kill switch with no opt-out process takes power away from the individual and leaves the door ajar for governments to exploit such technology to target dissent, such as Turkey recently shut down Twitter in an attempt to cover up a political scandal. I couldn't agree more with that statement. And it really is scary the way this technology is being used as a double-edged sword while we use it out in the field to gather information to show you the authorities and our public servants are using it to take information away from us and limit access. It's really scary. Let's move on to some TSA news. TSA agent arrested on cocaine trafficking charges. I also include she is a mother of four. A South Florida mother and transportation security administration agent is facing felony charges of manufacturing and selling drugs in her home. Latuana Daniels, 33, was being held without bond Sunday after investigators said they uncovered 111 grams of cocaine, 39 grams of marijuana in her homestead home. Police also found tools for packaging cocaine along with scales, beakers, and packaging materials used to cook cocaine and process it into crack cocaine. I find this part the most interesting. The tools were found in a closet next to her TSA uniforms. So obviously the TSA is trying to distance themselves from this scandal, considering that they are constantly being in the news for theft, for running around shouting that they're God, assault, all kinds of charges because these people are on power trips. But this also has another you know, kind of sad aspect to it. Here we have a mother of four trying to make ends meet, most likely, and she turns to drugs because that is a good, easy second job to have. You can do it from your house. Customers come to you and you can make a, there's a high profit margin in it. So I can understand why she's selling drugs and that's why drugs should be legal. So we wouldn't have things like this, nor would we have our transportation security officials going into this line of work. Uh, one final article before we go to break. Watchdog asked government to distribute emergency nuke pills to Canadians. The Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission has asked the government to distribute potassium iodide pills to Canadians living within 10 kilometers of nuclear power plants, highlighting lingering concerns over the 2011 Fukushima disaster. The CNSC is proposing the tablets be pre-distributed within the plume area of radiation of about 10 kilometers for a select portion of the population, which in the greater Toronto area means about a quarter million people. Uh, energy producers present, uh, present at a meeting to discuss the issue in Ottawa expressed doubts about the program, insisting that Canadians might think the pills were being forced upon them. Yes, obviously people don't want any help from radiation uh, from their government, especially in the form of potassium iodide. Right, we're supposed to believe that. They just don't want to spend the money on this. But that is an interesting article that watchdog groups are petitioning their government to make uh, available these types of things like potassium iodide. I myself, I actually take the uh, X2 survival shield. And let me tell you, you can taste every drop of power. It almost tastes like you're mainlining seawater. Pretty impressive stuff. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out at the InfoWars store. I think we have a detox special going on right now. And it has given me a big boost of, in energy and I could definitely feel the toxins leaching out of my skin. I practically have to wash my face three or four times a day just to get rid of the, the crud coming out. And without further ado, we'll go to break and we'll be right back with why you should not become a CIA or FBI informant. It's the InfoWars and Nightly News. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate, and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds, 
And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Now, I mentioned right before we went to break on why you should not become a CIA or FBI informant. Well, for one reason, you're going to be setting up all kinds of people, and I don't know if you want that type of dirty laundry on your soul as you go through this life. Two, they're probably going to double cross you, and three, they might even kill you in the end. You never know. Let's go to this Mail Online article. My CIA handlers cheated me out of $5 million, then set a trap to murder me. He was the spy who risked everything to bring down top terrorists. His reward, to become a target himself. So mouthful of a headline there. But it's about the story of Murad Storm, a.k.a. Morton Storm, who became a MI5 asset, and then he got in with the CIA, and he actually helped track down Anwar al You might remember him from the 2002 article that said, uh, terrorists dined at the Pentagon. There's a picture of him right there. He actually went to a Pentagon dinner after 9-11. That's how dangerous this man was. We had to have him in the Pentagon. Well, and as you know, just a few years ago, we tracked him down via drone and shot him and his son with a missile. Well, Morton Storm claims he is the man who helped do that. And his, I guess, reward or punishment? Well, his reward was one, he didn't get any of the money that was promised him, the $5 million. They said, no, they need him to go do more. And in the end, he talks about how he felt like he was double-crossed and he even had a source came up, come up to him and say, hey, when you were down there with Al-Qaeda, they were planning on taking you out with them. So it just goes to show you, you got to watch who you're doing business with. We've covered this countless times on the InfoWars Nightly News, and Alex has covered it even before that, of people getting involved with the FBI and turning people in on basically fake evidence or going out with money and trying to buy people to turn them into terrorists. And with that, we go to this report by Joe Biggs. Right now, we really don't have a lot of domestic terrorists. So the FBI is getting bored. So they're creating bad guys to go after. It's like Batman in Gotham City running out of the Joker, Two-Face, and then finding someone else and pissing them off and getting them to go out so he has someone to fight. That's all the FBI is doing right now. Can the federal government take credit for saving us from a plot of its own creation? The FBI has foiled about 17 plots to kill Americans. The 17 that were interrupted by the feds were created by the feds. But the more curious cases are the remaining 17 for which the federal government has taken credit. They all have a common and reprehensible thread. They were planned, plotted, controlled, and carried out by the federal government itself. Right now we have the case in Florida. Marty Winters is a 55-year-old prepper. It's usually the, the, the good family to right down the street that you know to. that goes to church every day, hardworking Americans who pay their bills. And really all they're doing is they're just trying to prepare in case something bad happens. What's wrong with that? You know, the way our government's going right now, the way our economy is, it looks like that is a possibility that, you know, everything could collapse. So what's wrong with being prepared? Our government wants us to be prepared for a worst case scenario by forcing us to buy Obamacare, but we as Americans can't prepare. We can't go out and buy MREs. We can't have, you know, water purification devices and stored water, guns and ammunition, just to be on the safe side. And this man had FBI agent infiltrate his river otter prepper group and say that he had 50 AK-47s buried across his properties. He had a house that was booby trapped that he would catch on fire and when federal agents showed up, it would kill them. Now after the search warrant was given, they went